Justin Haley and Spire Motorsports won the cup race by not hitting before one to go. Uh, spot on, spot off. Brett. Man, this is a hard one. Uh, I could talk for an hour about this, I think. Spot on to, for Justin Haley. Uh, good kid. Like I said, had one taken away from him last year at Daytona where he really didn't have a reason to go below the yellow line, but he did. And NASCAR had to make a call, and they did, and they DQ'd him. So a little bit of uh, revenge there for him. I'd have to wonder what he's really feeling inside today because I feel like all day yesterday he probably just couldn't believe that he had just won a race considering he was in a backmarker car, probably never passed anyone all day, maybe not even all year in the Cup Series. I don't know. I mean, that car's not really – a competitive piece of equipment, but good for him. Where, where my struggle lies is, you know, NASCAR has to throw the caution because it's for the big wreck. All right. So then we're riding around there and they open pit road. Okay. And then everybody pits. Well, not Kurt Busch. He's leading, not Landon Castle. He's running second, not Justin Haley. He's running third, but NASCAR typically will tune into radios to see what we're going to do in certain situations. So I'm assuming that they were hearing chatter of the one car saying, when it's one to go, we're going to come top off. Well, they threw one to go. They knew where the storms were. They had to know where the lightning was if they got all this technology. They threw one to go. Well, everybody pits but Justin Haley. So now they probably thought William Byron was going to inherit the lead. Landon Castle and his crew chief were obviously the second worst call because the worst call was Matt McCall and Kurt Busch not staying out. They had fuel. They just wanted to be on the same sequence as the leaders because everybody had to get to a point to stop again. But Landon Castle throws the race away. Kurt Busch throws the race away. Now here sits a kid in a business venture, you know, that just so happens to be a race team, Spire Motorsports. They go in. They paid millions of dollars for the 78 charter. said six million. They paid six million dollars for the charter. They had a business plan that in three years – the $6 million debt would be paid off based on how much money they're going to spend on the race team and how much money they're going to gross. So three years down the road, in 2022, their $6 million debt has now been eliminated. Everything they continue to make on that car from that point forward is profit, profit right? That's what this team set out to do with this particular car. Um, people have a problem with that. I saw some uh, some media people and fans having a problem with that. Look, I mean, we're still all in the racing business. They just go about it differently than some of the other owners go about it. So there's not a law against what they do. There's not a rule against what they do. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to do it, you know. But, again, I could talk for an hour because there's a lot of different stuff going on with this thing. But I'm really glad for Justin Haley. That's cool. Yeah, you know, I'm, I could be both sizes. I could be spot on because they won the race. They made the right call at the right time. And the caution was thrown for lightning at that point. So I think um, – I don't think the lightning strike had hit yet before they held the one to go. Tyler said that he was telling his team how close the lightning was from where he was standing. So he was he, if the one car radio was reporting lightning very close to the racetrack. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that that's I don't think they sit there and say, "Hey, we don't want this guy leading." Um, well, they don't know who's going to lead. I mean, well, they, yeah, they, they don't know. I, they I don't. don't know. They don't make a call by who might pit and who not who's not going to pit they're going to make a call whenever their little i'm guessing their radar pops up and it shows a lightning bolt within the their ra their radius and that's it um but you know i'm spot on for justin for obviously missing the wreck and and um you know but it, it just the Somebody only said he ran 27th all day he was 27th when going into turn one <laughs> <laughs> so the only time i can remember anything remotely like this happening was with the same group almost that the same kind of related was uh james busher chris busher no 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 uh, james, james busher at daytona, at daytona. 2012. Oh, there was a big wreck off of four and he was running probably 15th mm -hmm. middle of the backstretch comes off of four and they all wreck front of him and he wins the race so but that's part of it there i mean is that's probably not going to happen anywhere else Everything aligned correctly, and he he won the race. It's a lot of variables, man. There's I, so many, so many variables, uncontrollable. For, well, it's yeah. interesting when you said, um, you know, you tip. They, NASCAR typically listens to kind of what driver or what teams are going to do, but they should. On um, on the on TV, they were saying. I think it was Rick Allen mentioned that you know the lightning strike must not have hit when NASCAR called one to go, and so they obviously then the lightning strike hit. So it was just horrible timing. But is there more strategy? Yeah. Is there more to it that? Well, at that point, when they give the one to go, they know what's going to play out. I mean, they've, they've seen it. And then the lightning is so close that you don't have a choice but to throw it because of your policy, right? Yeah. So, it, uh, man, Justin Haley's group made a 
I, that's got to be the biggest upset in sports history. I don't recall ever seeing a team that that not competitive win anything. Like this is yeah. unbelievable. This like, is this is like something like this is um, it's like a way you know lower uh, like a like a UFC fighter or boxer a way lower guy fighting a top ranked guy. Like, it's like TJ like, beating Mike Tyson. Would be like me fighting <laughs> Floyd, Floyd Mayweather and him breaking his hand and can't go on and I get the win. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's, it's something crazy like that. that it's happened. the biggest upset in sports history. Yeah. I mean, again, this this. Although I think I could win that. What was the best finish they've had all year before a win? Probably twenty eighth, maybe. I mean, nah, that's probably stretching it too. I mean, these guys are uh, again. TJ, uh, I think Dickerson owns a part of that company too. Um, smart guys, and they Look, brought sponsorship into the sport. I mean, they they yeah. got a plan here, but it certainly wanted to go out and, and win a race. Hey, good good for them though. For everything everything worked out perfectly. You couldn't plan on any of that stuff happening again. Like I mean, it you, did. You just do the simple math, right? So you know that last place. Is going to earn them about four million dollars a year in in revenue, right? So they paid six for it. They're telling you they want to pay it off in three years. They're telling you they're going to run the company on two million, pay two million back to the bank. Obviously, I'm not including interest. Duh, for all you math majors out there. But long story short, that's what they did. I mean, they they took a business risk, and this payoff was not calculated. So all they're doing now is paying their loan off quicker. Yeah. Best finish was 28th at Charlotte mm. this season. Yeah, that's uh. There's never going to be a bigger upset than what just happened right there, ever. And I don't know how. I don't think it can't. This can't happen anywhere but a plate race. A hundred percent true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For to a team of that caliber, because anywhere else they're going to be multiple laps down. You know, at that point in the race. Did you see the poll for how many people liked the race? No. It was like sixty forty liked it. Yeah. But that's also because. NASCAR's hands were kind of they were they're mad about the rain and lightning and stuff man again a lot of variables they, um, whenever you like let's th- say this if you do take that poll judge it by the racing on the racetrack not the outcome not the not world. for variables that can't be controlled don't say you didn't like the race because it was lightning within eight miles that's not fair really the race was very exciting like the throughout cup, the I mean, cup race was awesome both of them were both, awesome yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how you can say it was a, see this is why i'm starting to see the polls are influenced by who wins the race really yeah. other variables other than just the product on the track yeah the, and people well, don't judge it by don't judge it by you know oh the because of the weather judge it by what you saw under green flag were you on the edge of your seat yeah that's what I would. The Xfinity go with. race in February was horrible. You could yeah. not run the bottom. Everybody was so loose. The, the top line prevailed every single time. We came back obviously this weekend, and the Xfinity race at night was phenomenal. You know, um, it just man, it's you just never know what you're going to get with these plate races. But I thought the Cup race yesterday was as good of a plate race as I've seen at Daytona in a very long time. Maybe since like 04, 05 even. Hey, get excited! Hey, I am excited. We got a new sponsor, OfferPad. They give you an easy way to buy or sell your home. All you got to do is hit OfferPad.com. OfferPad, move freely. The victory is mine.